your hands and just begin to celebrate your God. Celebrate his faithfulness. Celebrate his willingness. Celebrate his faithfulness. The fact that he's not only doing, he has done. And that he will continue to do. Amen. Hallelujah. He is the greatest power. And I mean, you know, you need that power most when you're going through. Amen. When it ain't working like you thought it would or should. Nevertheless, is able. I think we preached about that last week in dealing with all grace. First thing to know is that he is able. Amen. The question then becomes, are you willing to let me do what I need to do in this particular season of your life? Whether it looks right or wrong, it doesn't matter. I'm still God. Whether it feel good or not, I'm still God. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift your hands again, Father. We bless you today. We celebrate you out of this house, oh God. We magnify you out of this house, oh God. We love on you out of this house, oh God. We lift you up in this house, oh God. We exalt you in this house, oh God. You are the greatest power. You are the all-sufficient God. And you are more than able, God, to make all grace abound for us. Tuesday night, and I thank again everyone that went with us on Tuesday night. Tuesday night, God said, tell the people to dare to ask me to anoint them like I did Jesus. And we were coming out of Acts 10 and verse 38. And so even as a continuation of that message somewhat, I want to look at something different here today. In Isaiah 60, and I want to pick it up in verse 1 through 3. And it's seemingly my new custom on call. Look at it from also uh, the message translation. Or actually, the passion translation is well. In Isaiah 60, verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For darkness, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, 
and gross darkness to people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles, verse 3, shall come to the light, and kings to the brightness, look at this, of thy rising. Thy rising. I want to uh, develop a thought this morning that it's on me. It's on me. Now watch this. We talked about Tuesday night. God anoint me, but you got to recognize now it's on me. Huh? We talked about God ain't coming. God is present. He's already here. Everything God's going to do, it's already done. So we've got to learn out of, how to live out of a now state in our walk. Don't get me wrong. We still say expectation. But you ought to expect that you already got it. You ought to believe it's already here. It's already done. Why? We need a shift in mindset so we can move. Come watch this. As long as you waiting on something to come, you doing just that. You ain't, you ain't moving. You ain't going after. You're not in pursuit of. Amen. Now watch this here. I'm going to read from the, I'm going to read one and three from the, from the Passion Translation. It says, rise up in splendor, be radiant, for your light has dawned, and Yahweh's glory now streams from you. Hmm? What God is doing in you should be streaming from you, and even if we think about it in the terms of what we do now in technology called streaming and streaming live. How I many you know when you stream live is that you can be somewhere else around the world, but you're in the moment, it's happening. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, y'all ain't missed it. Y'all missed that one. God says, I'm trying to put you in the moment. I'm moving. Wow. Mm. Watch this here. Watch this here. Somebody talked about it some time ago. This ain't no delay no more. Huh? There's no delay. God says, I want to put you in the now moment because I'm moving now. Right. Like this here. Look carefully. Dark blankets the earth and thick clouds cover the nation. But Yahweh arises upon you and the brightness of his glory appears over you. Huh? First translation. He's in you. Second translation, he's over you. Nations will be attracted to your radiant light and keen to the sunrise glory of your new day. Your new day. The day that God's doing things different in you. And watch this, and I tell you this all the time, and you recognize it. Why do you recognize it? Because I'm in the now with God. Huh? I ain't looking for something down the road to come and happen. God, you're moving now. God, you're in me now. This is in the atmosphere for me now. Thank you. Michael. Now, let's go to the message translation. Here's how it starts off. Get out of bed, Jerusalem. Wake up. Get out of bed. Wake up. Why are we sleeping? The Bible says, awake thou that sleep. Arise and put on your strength. I mean, no sleep is good, but too much sleep saps your strength. Mm -hmm. When you can lay in the bed all day. Now, don't get me wrong. I know there are times we are sleep deprived and, and we need them 12, 13 hours. I said 12 or 13. I didn't say 24. Because after a while, we're going to wonder whether you're dead or not. Huh? Look what he says. Get out of bed, Jerusalem. Wake up. Put your face in the sunlight. Put your face in the sunlight. See, watch this. You can't sleep in the sunlight. It's too bright. Huh? There's too much radiance of heat. Do you catch what he's saying? Put your face in the sunlight and ask them, look at me. So I can motivate you. Look at me. So I can move you. Look at me. So I can stir your potential. God's bright glory has risen 
for you. God says, you got to understand what I'm doing right now is for you. Right there. Not only for you, but for your good. God, you mean you mean not allowing me to, 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 to get more sleep than necessary is for my good? Allowing me to be awake and active, allowing me to be awake and in play is for my good. Yeah, because what he's doing, if you sleep, you miss it. Huh? It's important to be in the right place at the right time with the right people. Come on now. God's bright glory has risen for you. The whole earth is wrapped in darkness. All the people sunk in deep darkness. But God rises on you. Come on, y'all. Let's get a little selfish right now. He doing this for me. Yes. Huh? Stop looking around. What is he doing in you? See, sometimes we got more attention on what he's doing for other folk, and we missing what he's doing for us. Right. Come, on. God, come on now. What is he doing for me? Look at you. Right. Amen. Look what he goes on to say. God arises on you. His sunrise glory breaks over you. Nations will come to your light. Your light. Your light. Your anointing. Your presence. Nations will come to your light. Kings to your sunburst brightness. Look up. Look around. Watch as they gather. Watch as they approach you. Your sons coming from great distances. Your daughters carried by their nanny. When you see them coming, you'll smile. Big smiles. Mm -hmm. God said, because what I'm doing in you creates an overflow. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on, come on. If we don't allow him to do it in us, if we don't recognize it's in us, it's on us, guess what? Others are going to come up short. Mm -hmm. Somebody waiting on you to shine. Somebody waiting on you to light up. Somebody waiting on you to be activated in the presence of God so they can get activated in the presence of God. Watch this, watch this. Your heart will swell and yes, burst. All those people returning by sea for the reunion, a rich harvest of exiles, gathered in from nations, and then streams of camel caravans. As far as the eye can see, young camels of nomads in Midian and Alpha pouring in from the south from sea, but loaded with gold frankincense, preaching the praises of God. And yes, a great roundup of flocks from the nomads in Kedah and Nabor welcome gifts for worship at my altar as I bathe my glorious temple. In now, in a nutshell, let's just see it. Everything God's getting ready to do. God says, I'm moving on you to move on them so I can bathe everybody in the temple. So that I can bring them all in for the temple wash. Now is the wash. It's in worship. It's when all nations and kindreds, sons and daughters, all be on one accord giving God praise. They see you praising. They want to praise. They see you worshiping. They want to worship. They see you happy. And they want to be happy. They see you blessed. And they want to know, how do I get blessed? Is it making sense? Stay right there in Psalm 6. Go to Psalm 61. Just go over one more. Here's the thing God recognized, Jesus recognized. And you find Jesus recognized, and we've already talked about it out of Luke 4 and around verse 18, when he says he's reading the book, watch this, and he discovers himself. He's reading the book, and he discovers himself. But not only does he discover himself, he discovers his purpose. He discovers his place. Are you catching me? He discovers himself. He discovers his purpose. He discovers his place. Then he discovers who he's sent to. Yes, that's it. Come on. Amen. 
Come on, watch this here. In Isaiah 61, look at that first verse. I'll read it from the NLT. Look what it said. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. The spirit of the sovereign Lord. Well, what is that word sovereign? He does what he want to do. Huh? So no longer God, why did you make me like this? When you understand his sovereignty, you understand because he wanted to. God, why are you doing this? Because I want to. This is what I have purposed you for. This is what I have fashioned you for. This is the place I have ordained you to manifest. These are the people I sent you to. Do they have to be like you? No. Do they have to look like you? No. But here's where I've sent you. Here is what's in the midst. Now let your light shine. Turn on so they can see. Yeah, I probably could have said this one or that one, but I didn't. I sent you. I clothed you and anointed you and I purposed you and made you for this people. Huh? Sometimes the places we running from, God said, you don't understand. You ain't harvested it yet. This is your field of opportunity. This is your field of opportunity. And yes, God has the power to shift you out of one into another, but know that it's God. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, for God has anointed me to bring good news to the people I'm in the midst of. And all of them ain't rich. All, some of them poor. Some of them broke. Some of them busted. Some of them disgusted. But I'm here with a word. I'm here with an anointing. I'm here, watch this, as Esther said, for such a time as this. To bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be free. Don't devalue the light. Remember, he sent his word and he healed them. And he delivered them. Some of them said, 20 is your founding verse for this ministry. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So most people you assign to me is on their way out till they meet you. They hurt you till they meet you. They broke, busted, and disgusted till they meet you. God has set the solitary in the family to bring out them that are bound with chains and shackles till they meet you. You got to recognize it's on me because I'm the one God going to use to set you free. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's on me. This is what Jesus recognized when he read that scroll, when he read that book. He said, it's on me. It's on me. The spirit of the Lord, that's what he says in Okay, go to uh, Luke 4. Let me go ahead and show it to you. Luke 4. Luke 4. Look what he says. Luke 4. Let's pick it up in... Sixteen. Look for sixteen. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for the reading. So in Nazareth, Jesus went to church. He went to church and notice what he did when he was there. He read the scriptures. Okay? And that and verse 17 says, And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written that the Spirit of the Lord, what? 
is on me. Jesus said, all I had to read and understand was, is on me. Right. Amen. Are you following me this morning? Yeah. It's on me. Right. That's all Jesus did. He read that the Spirit is on him. Yeah. Yeah. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. Why? Because he have anointed me to preach this gospel. He's anointed me to tell folks the good news. Not only to tell them the good news, watch this, but demonstrate it. It's on me. What's on me? The anointing. What does the anointing do? Destroy yokes. Isaiah 10, 27. It destroys yoke. It removes the burden. It sets the captive free. It's on me. Jesus said, I read this and it's on me. I've been wondering what this was I had. Now I understand. I was wondering how it operated and who it was for. Now I understand it's on me. Y'all still ain't caught me. So in modern day urban culture, the term says if we go out and I say it's on me, what do, we, what do you think? What you think I'm finna do? You think I'm finna pay for it? Come on, Sister Hawkins. Give Sister Hawkins a free book or something. <laughs> Amen. Give Hawkins a free book. Watch this here. Look here. It's on me. He says what? I'm gonna pay for this. Y'all yeah. yeah. still ain't caught me yet. Yeah. Jesus said, I'll pay for this. Yeah. 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 Yes, he did. Now, see, some of y'all have caught me right quick. Because y'all starting to understand. Apostle, is this? Yeah, it's on you. Yeah. Pay for it. Yeah. Pay for it. Yeah. Pray. Put your life on the line. Right. Speak. Right. Yeah. Cast that demon, that devil out. It's on you! Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said it was on me. And he went to the crowd and he paid the price. Yeah. Yes, he, did. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. he went to the cross. Yeah. Just how can he say it's on me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, like most of us, let's go ahead and break it down. Oh, we sometimes we don't want the bill at the table. So let's break it on down. Huh? I mean, some of y'all won't take folks out to dinner. I understand. Well, hopefully we're going to break that today. Amen. And I'll be ready, I'll be ready to go when y'all say let's go. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go over there. All right, I'm just messing with you. Listen, here's what he said. It's on me. So I'm going to go to the cross, and I'm going to be the propitiation for sins, and I'm going to do for you what you can't do for yourself. It's on me. Because in order for you to be free, I got to die. In order for you to be healed, I got to die. In order for you to be delivered, I got to die. I will pay this one. No matter what just sung it, I didn't even know what he was saying. If he's the greatest power. But watch this. The Bible says he died, but he distributed the power upon resurrection. So now watch this. Don't miss this. It was on him. Right. Now it's on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was on him. He hung glad he died. It was on him. He said, but now what I paid for, yeah. Yeah, it's on you. Yeah. Watch this. Watch this. To dispense. Let's say I'm finna help somebody. Wow. You ain't got to pay for this one. He already paid yeah. for it. Right. Some of y'all say, yeah. <laughs> uh, Now you still got to buy dinner. Right. I ain't gonna ain't get y'all the hook on now. You still got to buy dinner sometimes. But listen, this anointing, he paid for it. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But he didn't pay for it and keep it. Jesus was not selfish with the power. He is the greatest power, but the greatest power said, listen, I can get more done through y'all. Huh? He says, it's on me. But guess what? It's now on you. Huh? I rose with all power in my hand. But then I looked at you. And I refuse to leave you powerless. Yes. Come on, 
But what I did need you was powerful, full of me, full of my glory, full of my presence, full of my anointing, full of my ability. You fool! And y'all looking at me crazy. Prophesy to yourself, I'm full. I talked to you last week about full of grace. He was full. See, how do I get all grace? Because he filled you up. How do I walk in the fullness of his spirit and that with power? Because he filled me up. He poured out of himself. Yeah. Tell your neighbor. Go ahead and look up in the eye and prophesy. It's on, man. It's on. I've been, I've been trying to get away from it. I've been trying to deny it, but it's on me. Hmm? Watch this. Let's go a little deep. I just heard this one. I've been running from it. But it's on me. I heard that one. You know, I can say, well, you know, in Roosevelt, no, in the road, when you stand here and all of a sudden, he just drops up. So in essence, I'll make this point. It's on you. But you've been running. Can I submit to you what you're running from, you only run into? That's right. That's right. Hmm? Can I submit to you? It shall one day apprehend you. And you're going to have to embrace it back. Because you can't get away. Watch this. If it's on you, where you're going, that it ain't going. You ain't going nowhere without it. Right. <laughs> Even when you tried to make a bed in hell, he showed up. Right. Even when you tried to drink yourself full, when you tried to smoke yourself full, when you tried to whore around and get... Wait, 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 wait let me quit. <laughs> ain't nothing you did. Ain't nothing you doing. That you're going to get away from God. Right. Yeah. Hmm? Old folks, you say it this way. He'll slow walk you down. <laughs> Some of us found that to be true. Because sometimes you think the more you do wrong, he'll leave you alone. It's on you. And so the more you did, the more convicted you got. You never got away from him. Why couldn't I get away? It was on. It was on me to preach. It was on me to teach. It was on me to deliver, minister, deliver. You can't get away. Right. At some point, you're going to stop trying to resist God right. Right. and go ahead on and submit to God. Yeah. 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 Submit to God and resist the devil. We try to resist the devil so we can submit to God. God said, no, 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 no. Submit to me and then you can resist it. You can't stop till we get connected. You can't stop until I make known the will. Is it making sense? All right, let me finish up. Let me finish up. Go to 1 Peter. It's on me. It's on you. It's on us. And the quicker we submit to what's on us, guess what's going to happen? It's going to blow up. The man of God already came, declared to re release the prophecy. The outpouring is coming. You're running from souls and running from lies, but guess what? You don't get away. You didn't get away, and he ain't about to let them get away, but he ain't going to let you run them away either. You're going to have to minister or serve them with the anointing. Ooh. Now, it's okay if you get them a glass of water. It's okay if you get them a napkin. It's okay if you show them the bathroom, but some of them ain't going to need that. They're going to need deliverance. They're going to need healing. They're going to need to know what it is to walk in forgiveness and forgive all them that have done them wrong.
First Peter 4. <clears throat> Let's pick it up right there. 12, 12, 12. Look at this. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. I'm only going through to get to. There's an anointing on the line. There's an anointing on the line because there's a people on the line. And did you catch that? There's an anointing on the line because there's a people on the line. Now, which one do you think God is more interested in? The people. Because he's so interested in the people, he provided an anointing. But what you keep missing is the anointing has to operate through a vessel. So if God has a people, the anointing is going to be on a person. Because the person is for the people. Now see how they just went holy quiet. Sorry, that's the truth. God's anointing you. And remember, I've shared this many times. The anointing you carry ain't for you. But the quicker you understand, I'm anointed for somebody else. I'm anointed to help somebody else. I'm anointed to deliver somebody else. But guess what? Somebody's anointed for me. So you want to always be mindful how you sow. Because how you sow is how you reap. Watch this, watch this. So look what he goes on to say. But rejoicing as much as you are what? Partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed. In essence, when the anointing shows up, most times you discover it in suffering and even so after. It's the discovery. He says, if you suffer with me, then you can reign with me. That's when you don't despise going through. Because I'm going through to get to. When I come out of this, there'll be a new glory on me for a people waiting on me. Watch this, watch this. Let me read it from the Passion. It says, beloved friends, if life gets extremely difficult, with many tests, don't be bewildered as though something strange were overwhelming you. Instead, continue to rejoice for you in a measure have shared in the sufferings of the anointed one so that you can share in the revelation of his glory and celebrate with even greater gladness. Watch this here. Here's what I want to read. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are greatly blessed because the spirit of glory and power, who is the spirit of God, is resting on you. So yeah, Folks might not like you because they see what's on you. But when you start to understand what's on you, you don't care that they insult you. You mad at me, but you're going to thank me when it's on. You don't like me because of what I say. You don't like me because of what I carry. But after you heal, after you deliver, you'll thank me. So now watch this. Their issue should never remove you 
from the anointing. That's right. You got to know it's on you. Right. But now you got to understand what's on me will make some folks mad. That's right. What's on me will make some folks jealous. Right. What's on me will make some folks want to fight. Right. But guess what? The battle is not mine. It's the Lord. Hate me, but you're going to need me. Talk about me and lie on me, but you're going to need me. Scandalize my name, but you're going to need me. Why? There's an anointing on me. There's an anointing on you. Watch this. You've been sent. And everybody you've been sent to does not have to favor you. David said, is there not a cause? I don't care you don't like me. You perishing. I don't care that you don't like me. You drowning. I didn't come for friendship. True love doesn't come for friendship. I come to help save you yes, yes, yes. from yourself. Yes. Huh? From the spiral that you're in. I didn't come to be your friend. Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace, but a and we know the word will already divide. It'll cut in some of the thoughts. It'll cut in some and, and asunder, bone and marrow, even in tents of the heart. Sometimes you gotta let folks know. I carry a sword. Right. Hmm? It's on me now. I'm gonna let you know. It's on me. I'm carrying now. I ain't carrying what I used to. Uh, I ain't caring what I used to. But I got a sword in my mouth now. Don't make me read your mail. Because I'm totally heavy now. Tell your name, I'm under heavy anointing. Mm -hmm. I'm, see, y'all didn't catch that question. How do you know you're under heavy anointing? All the hell all the lies been said and spoken and mess that got started around you trying to pull you off the wall come here Nehemiah and talk to us I'm on the wall doing a great work I can't come down fooling with your foolishness man I'm after God's I'm trying to watch them. Watch Kelly we going on this whole day. I'm trying to save me to help save you. Come on, come on. But you want me to act a fool. You want me to cut up. Huh? We uh 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 uh. I gotta save me. See, watch this here. Sometimes you got to remember it's on you. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Because if you ain't careful, I'll slip back and cuss you out. <laughs> See, y'all don't want to be real in church. Y'all want to be an already got there, already made and finished and done. I'm telling you, you still striving toward the mall. But I'm going to try to help us all get there. But what I got to do is realize, it's on me, man. Because right. huh? sometimes I want to go back, but it's on me. Sometimes I want to cut up, but it's on me. Huh? And I got to realize, I ain't the only one at stake. There's a people that need this anointing. Huh? And God says, watch this, and I've set you apart for such a time. Elsa, you think you're just going over here to uh-uh, Elsa, your people need you. Yeah, yeah. Did y'all catch that? Yeah. Your people need 
loved you. Yes, Lord. Huh? Vashti acted a fool and got out of position. Yeah. Esther. I, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Huh? Why? Because Vashti wasn't anointed to save your people. Right. That's a whole other story. That thief, I ain't going into this. Huh? See, sometimes you got to, he got to remove what's not for you to bring to you what will fight for you. Vashti wasn't going to fight for the people. Huh? She didn't even fight for her own marriage. And God said, next. And here come Esther. Right. And Esther said, if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to see the king. Because yes. my people. Yes. She decreed a fast and said, my people. Yes. She recognized, watch this, God is on me. Yes. If this nation is going to survive, watch this, I got to get in position. Y'all, did y'all see that? Yeah. I got to get in position. Watch this, watch this. I got to call a fast. Yes, yes. Hmm? Not just I fast, I need the people's fast. Yes, yes. Huh? Because watch this. When the anointing show up, I need us all ready for its breakthrough. Yes, 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 yes. That's the call of fast. She told Mordecai, tell all the people, go on a fast. And when this fast is over, I'm going before the king. Now the law said, if I approach him out of season, he could refuse me and it be my life. Y'all yeah. missing me? Yeah. It's on me. Yeah. If it's my life, it's on me. Yeah. What does that for say? I'm going to show up and pay the price. Yeah. Watch this. Because your deliverance, your healing, your existence, is at stake. Yes, yes, yes. Esther said his own thing. Yes. The Bible says she went before the king mm -hmm. and he extended his sepulchre, yes. which means come forward. Yes. Tell me what you want. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes. Tell me what you need. Mm -hmm. And watch this. And I will I'll grant it. Esther, you love your people. I'm going to grant their existence. This Haman that's plaguing, I'm going to take him down. This enemy that thought he had won against you is going to lose this day. Watch this. He touched the wrong one. Don't touch a person that's got an onus with God. Don't touch a person that's anointed to go into the presence of God. You will never win. But you who are anointed will win. You will go in the presence of God and the anointing will show up. And when you come out, it'll be greater than you went in. Yes, yes. If you suffer with me, you'll reign with me. So lead today knowing his own man. He paid the price, his own man. He distributed his own man. The Bible said, watch this, and he gave gifts unto me. Hmm? Your gift is tied to an anointing. Don't oh, make me have to go down this road. Your gift is tied to the anointing. It's supposed to do certain things. Whether it be apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, whether it be gifts of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders, whether it's faith, whether it's word of wisdom, word or not, there's an anointing tied to the gift that's in your life. But it ain't for you. He gave you the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is the orchestrator of the gifts. The Bible says, he says, as he wills. 
Be mindful of these folks that got their gear working 24 7. They still here. I've been at this a long time and mine don't work 24 7. Mm. But some folks don't never cut off. They can, they can just prophesy at me and just, I, I'm not. Anyway, I'm going to leave that alone. Because the scripture plainly says it's as he wills. Now watch this. If it's as he will, but I'm now doing it, he ain't willing in it anymore. And I want to stay in right standing with God. Amen. If he says, say it, I'm going to say it. But if he said, be quiet, be quiet. The Bible even says, study to be quiet. Sometimes you think we're supposed to, cause you're anointed, you're supposed to talk all the time. Most anointed people only talk when they are activated to talk. Mm. Is it making sense? So remember, it's only.